Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Coupe de Villa channel. I'm Scott Cooper, and I'm here with Noah Fisher to talk about Manchester United versus Aston Villa in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Unai Emery's second game, played better, some good positive signs, but silly mistakes, still the story of the game. And we will be getting into all of that after this. Okay, so our second game of the week, Manchester United again, this time at Old Trafford, and Unai Emery's side travelled there on the Thursday night for the third round of the Carabao Cup. And Noah, um, it's so hard to sort of break this game down. I feel as if we played so well in parts. We looked really good in parts. The first half was boring for both sides, but the second half we came out firing and I was thinking, oh, this is going to be it, another upset, but... It was just Ings and Olsen. Oh, sorry, Mings and Olsen. Um, silly mistakes. I mean, yeah, that, that could be the podcast right there. Let's go home. Um, yeah. Sums it up perfectly. But, I mean, there's some positives to come out of the game, as you said. I mean, how many times do we see Ollie Watkins running into a position like that and shooting it straight at the keeper? I thought True. for confidence-wise, such a good finish for him. I was so happy he scored that goal. Mm. Um, because, I mean, I think I can think of so many times this season where it was like, dink it over the keeper. Just dink it over yep. the keeper. Yeah. Always go low. But that was one yep. of his uh, perfect finishes. Um, and I thought some certain players played well. I thought Jacob Ramsey looked looked very good. I was a bit surprised when he got dragged. But, yeah. I mean, we got three games in you know, two weeks, whatever it is. So, they're coming uh, thick and fast. I thought we'd see a bit of Morgan Sands on action. But, uh, mm. not to be for him. But, I mean, if you had said to me before this week started that we'd beat them in the league and lose them in the cup, I would have taken it anyway. Absolutely. I mean, out of the two games, this was the game that didn't matter as much. And um, yeah, and like you said, it wasn't a total disaster. Um, Ramsey found those little pockets in that sort of number 10 area where he was breaking forward from midfield. Um, Bailey, when he came on, did some electric stuff, some absolutely scintillating stuff, I thought. And like you said, Ollie Watkins, great finish on the goal, but then he got that other chance from when Bailey put him through and he, he, he kind of miscontrolled it like he, he often does. Um, but I think, you know, like I said before, the, the story of the game will be the mistakes. Olsen Mings, absolutely atrocious defending on the goals. Um, you know, first of all, the first goal from United uh, straight after Ollie scores, they go down the other end and score, you know, just a long ball over the top. We're caught square and, um, yeah, uh, Marcus, uh, was it Marcus? No, Martial scores after Bruno slips no, him in. It, I thought it was Marcus Rashford. No, it was Martial got the first oh, one. Oh, was it? Yeah. But, um, yeah, and, and that has happened a few times this season where we've scored and just, I don't know, like gone to sleep for a couple of minutes thinking, you know, maybe we've got this in the bag. But, um, yeah, that was disappointing. And, yeah, I mean, the... Oh, the one where Ming sort of fell over with Matt. Oh, I know, I know, they're blaming, I know they're blaming Mings for that, but I think Rashford was past him before he slipped. I mean, you can't just blame Mings for that because um, I think we had the ball in our own half and then they just got the one, the ball back. And then, you know, I think Ashley Young got rinsed and then Chambers got rinsed. And then I'm pretty sure that Martial was already around Mings when he slipped. So I'm pretty sure he's going to score regardless. I know you think about the slip and all that kind of stuff, but look, it didn't so look good. And I know that. I know like I know he throws himself in to challenge to blocks and challenges and that sort of thing. And you know, but he did look like he was sort of uncoordinated a, a little. It it looked like the kind of thing you'd see in the an under tens match. You know, um, it what it wasn't good. But you know, we know that we're going to get that with Mings, like. He had a great game on the weekend against Ronaldo. This game, he comes in, you know, as a sub, you know, and yeah, he's had a bad game. But he wasn't the worst one. Olsen was the worst one. <laughs> and yeah, like um, we were just talking before we started and you said the the turning point you felt was when he dropped that cross. Yeah, I mean, that ball went in and Emmy Martinez would have taken that nine, at least I can think of nine times out of ten. I can't remember Emmy Martinez dropping that. 
But then I think he threw it and turned it over and we just couldn't clear our lines for at least five, ten minutes. And I think it led to the third goal. Or was yeah. it the second goal it led to? Se- second goal, maybe. The yeah. one where yeah, the one where he passed it out and I oh, know it was the third goal to Bruno and then yeah, yeah, Bruno Bruno nicked it and stuck in the in the back of the head. By the way, while we're talking about Bruno Fernandez, I just want to say is there a more unlikable footballer on this planet? Like, honestly, this guy, he's the kind of guy you would immigrate to avoid. You know, you, it, it's terrible. He's hes a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, that little performance that he did in the first half against how Conzo. Did that, how did that get a foul? How did that get a foul? I know. But, well, there's no VAR, I guess, but... Um, I mean, I mean, how how low and just a piece of shit human do you have to be to try and get a free kick like that? Well, I mean, I don't know. But the but... Thing is, I don't know how the, oh, I don't know how the ref got sucked into it. To be fair, yeah, I no, mean, the, I... ref got, the ref got baited, and that that's kind of how it goes. But look, they get the last laugh at the end of the day. I'll tell you what, Ganacho. I mean, we speak about Mings having a good game last week. Ganacho was pretty quiet. I thought on the weekend and mm. that pass for the fourth goal to McTominay was absolutely world-class and he's going to be some player. You have to show respect where it's due. No, no. He's going to be some player. No, they've got themselves a talent there for sure. Even in, in the match against Villa on the weekend, he showed a couple of signs. You know, Matty Cash had a good game against him. Um, Ashley Young, you know, different age, you know, different sort of time of his career, you know, coming up against a young guy, that must've been a bit of a nightmare. Maybe there could have been a change there. Earlier, I think a few of our players did tire, tire in yeah. this we game. Ran legs. Yeah, I called it. I was obviously have a couple of mates of the Villa fans and a couple of the United fans. And I called it about the 70th. And I said, We're going to lose. I yeah. said, Just looking at how we're playing, our build up, our trying to clear our lines, we looked done in about 70 minutes, which I'm not sure 100%. what the issue is there. I'm not sure because I mean, we've not like we haven't played that many games in a row that quite frequently. Look at that. Well, COVID I thing. think I think we got Kamara coming back. He's in the center of midfield, and I think he started the tire. Yeah, that's um, fair enough for him. But Louise he, even looked bad. Yeah, no, no, no I agree. And uh, maybe it's maybe it's just we're not as used to playing two games a week as they are. You know, they can rotate a bit more than we can. They've got a bit more firepower coming off the bench than we do. Um, all those sort of things. It was also a very, very high intense second half. It was really like a basketball game for a while, real end to end. I mean, we scored and they scored like just there was no respite for any of the players and. Obviously, I know that if we want to play in Europe, we're going to have to do this every couple of mm. weeks, and that's where we want to be. And we will get there eventually. I think that we've got a great manager because we actually, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm upset we lost, mm. but I still think we played well, Scott. Like, I actually, I'm not, no, upset with, no, we no. still had a game plan. We still scored two goals. I think that header back, I don't know what Delo was doing for our second goal. Mm. He literally just punted into the own goal, but the header back from Bailey was so smart. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it made Delo think, is there someone there running onto the ball? I got to act. Yes, like he punted to his own. That was a bit of a stupid. Like he could have done that way better. Um, but you got to make him think. You got to you got to ask some questions, and that's what I think we did quite well. Yeah, and that in that first half as well, we um defended very solidly, and I think we saw the two signs of Emery in this game. Um, we saw Emery who can defend, who can you know be hard to break down, and he sort of maybe said to the team before the game, "All right." Let's let's be cautious in that first half. Let's try and take the crowd out of the game. You know, with the away team, let's get to half time, nil nil if we can. And, you know, then we'll see where we are, especially with the fact there's no extra time. It goes straight to penalties. Um, you know, it's getting to penalties would have been a pretty good result for us, you know, like um but you know, in that second half, we were a lot more on the front foot, uh, a lot more open at the back as well. It's got to be said. said. And um, hopefully um, Emery can just, you know, find his players or, you know, coach this play- these players that we do have into just giving up less individual errors. I mean, I thought Augustine, so now it's his second game of evolution. I thought he obviously looked rusty when he played 45 minutes against Brisbane and Raw, then didn't play till Leeds and only played about what? 30 minutes there, maybe just over 30 minutes. I think it was the yeah. first half he got injured. Yeah. Um, and it's just one of those things, you know, he he looked like he was lacking match fitness. Yep. And I guess that's good he got to play, but what was going to wait for the FA Cup now to, to play his next probably game unless Digne touch wood um, mm. gets injured. But I mean, I guess people got to play. You got to give him game time. Um, 
just move on. And I'm not, by the way, I'm not disregarding the KBR Cup. If, if Villa win the KBR Cup, I'll be absolutely buzzing. But if you had said to me, as I said at the start of the week, in the position we're in, I'd have rather the three points in the league. 100%. But I do really still feel like this was a missed opportunity. So you, know, I, you know, yeah. I really, you know, I was a, I was a little bit angry this morning, just the way we kind of folded in those last 15, 20 minutes. Um, and, you know, it really, I mean, 4-2, it doesn't really flatter me, you know. They they deserve to win, you know. like we, But, you know, we up until about 60 minutes or so, we, we were like right in it, if not the better team, you know, in some ways I thought. And, you know, we, we showed quite a lot, you know, going forward, you know, we didn't create a whole bunch of chances, but we kept no. the ball quite well. The possession, exactly. the possession was good in parts and defensively, we didn't really give them any chances at all. I think there was the, the Dallow header over the bar. The um, Maguire one from the set, the corner. Yeah. I think that's yeah. kind of after we really tired to be fair. That came in that passage of play where, we couldn't do anything right and they couldn't do anything wrong, apparently. Um, mm. But I think it's time to move on. More important things. One more game to the World Cup, Scott. And I can't wait to see the boys after a proper month with Unai Emery's uh, 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 at the helm, I guess. I think they're going away, so it's going to be really good to see. Yep, they're going to uh, Dubai, I think, uh, for a bit of a uh, mid-season getaway and training camp. So that's going to be interesting to see. Hopefully... You know, our fitness levels can go up a level because I think that's one area where we're not at the elite level. We're not yet. I wouldn't say we're an unfit side, but but we're not we're not as fit as some. Like I know Leeds come to mind straight away. Like a team like that that can run all day. Um, you know, Liverpool. You know, when they were when they were good. You know, this sort of yeah, you know yeah, exactly. You know, against you know that that kind of extra sort of couple of percentage, if you can get in in the fitness in the legs, like that can make all the difference, especially in those last fifteen minutes. And um, you know, in the last fifteen minutes of this game, you know, we seem to be, look a bit tired. So, but I think credit to United. What tires anyone more than anything is constantly defending. Con- mm. We we didn't we could not give our players any break at all. Even like oh. a, a one minute break just to settle down, get your composure. Manchester United went for the throat, and yes, I think this, like they deserve to win. Yeah, but you know if we could have just held onto the ball, calmly had the ball, had a a calm influence between the sticks. I mean, I, I don't remember Olsen really coming out of his six yard box besides that one that he almost ran around it from Fernandez in the first half. I think it was. That's right, um, and I, the, yeah. the, that that's the thing. We actually passed the ball really well until we didn't. Um, I felt like it felt like, you know, for the first hour or so we kept the ball well, we, we possessed it quite well. Um, McGinn was kind of giving away a couple of times and, but you know, we were, we were looking far better than under Gerard. Like, oh, yeah. like, you know, I'm not complaining here. Like, you know, I, I still think there's a lot of positives to take out of this game. hundred percent. But, you know, and it's a whole lot better than what we've been seeing, but you know, still, there's a part of me that's like, oh, if we could have just hung on. That's what I mean. I, who, who knows? You know, I would, and I would love. Oh, you've you've obviously seen us win a trophy, Scott. Me, the only trophy mm-hmm. I've seen us win is the bloody playoff final trophy, which it's not a trophy. You know, what I mean, I I'm no, dying to see us win a trophy, and we got the manager that could do it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if we got away with murder there last night, um, and somehow got a win, um, different story. Yep, I mean, I. I was I was only a teenager at school the <laughs> last time we won something. So uh, yeah, that 1996 leads three nil in the in the League Cup final. And um, yeah, if you think about it now, like Dwight York, who scored that day, is now a coach in Australia. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it was a long, long time ago, and, and it's well overdue. But um, you know, Unai Emery is the cup guy, so. You know, hopefully he sticks around for a while. He's successful. He gets us playing well, and I'm pretty sure he could bring home some some sort of silverware for us. You know, Definitely. in the next few years. Um, one thing I touched on though, Scott, I'm surprised that you haven't touched on it. How bloody good were the Villa fans? Oh my god! That's all I could hear. All I could hear was the Villa fans, and honestly, seven thousand, whatever it was, like unbelievable. That was unbelievable so good. Unbelievable turn. And- and I was um, listening to the BBC uh, football podcast today, and they yeah. they were talking to a couple of guys 
couple of reporters who were at the game, um, but they were talking about the England squad being announced and that sort of thing. And all you could hear in the background is the Villa fans. Like, no, it's and, unbelievable. And I, and it's I was unbelievable. like, wow, this is, uh, yeah. And one of my mates I was talking about, because you know when you get up early, like earlier for you, was it 4 a.m. for you, but like 7 a.m. for us, one of my mates stumbled out of bed, quickly chucked KO on to get the game on. He said he couldn't really see it, a bit blurry, you know, when you first wake up. Yeah. He said he thought we are playing at home. Yeah. He said, well, the, the, he thought we were playing at home just by how it sounded. He's like, what the hell, we're playing at Old Trafford. You know, and that's that's something that Unai Emery spoke about in his post-match um, interview. I think he really, you know, gets that. He gets that our fans, when they're on our side and when they're right behind the team, yeah. are like a 12th man. But, you know, you know, occasionally we can get a bit toxic as well when things aren't going well. But yeah. it's just because... You know, we've been so up and down and, you know, well, well, so down for a long time. Um, the, you know, it can be frustrating because we're, we, you know, we, our expectations are to be, you know, in and around the top sort of seven, you know, and we haven't been there for over 10 years. So you can understand the frustration, but, um, you know, he, I think he understands that the, our fans can be at that 12th man and we can, we need to get them on side. And um, yeah, I've been really impressed with a lot of what he's saying. Like, um, oh, so am I. So mm. am I. But yep. And um, it's disappointment. Is the it is disappointment, yeah. but we can move on from that now. The League Cup is gone for this year. We've got Brighton on uh, Sunday. That's the last game before the World Cup. And let you all know when the World Cup is on, we will still be coming out here with some content. We're going to be doing Coupe de Villa World Cup edition. Uh, the boys are all big fans of the Australian team, as am I. I also like the English team, as I was oh. born in England. So oh, it will be focus on those two teams. But we'll and be talking about even like his Italian uh, team. Maybe you never know. That's yeah. right. Yeah, he might. You know, he's a he's a part time Italian as well. <laughs> so <laughs> now we'll we, we'll talk about. Well, they're not even at the World yeah, Cup. That's why I, said, that's why <laughs> I, said it's I was like, hang on a minute. Uh, yeah. Oh, but yeah, we will be talking about all the games, and um, yeah, make sure you check that out. Please like and subscribe, and um, hit the bell, and we'll let you know on the notifications every time we bring out a video. But um, no, the uh, other big news. I guess going around in the last few days since the last podcast was the the new badge officially uh, announced. Shock me, yeah. Shock me, which one won? The round badge won. I love it. I love it, but I think some of the designs online were better with a round badge. I think there were things they could have done. Like it just looks like it's been made two seconds on Microsoft Paint. You know, like I think Look. I think they missed a trick. I think that they could have done a little bit better. I like it. I really yeah. like it, but just pissing me off. Mm. All the Twitter threads, not to sport. Oh, they've copied Chelsea. Yeah, oh, that... they've copied Chelsea. No, we haven't, mate. No, <laughs> no we haven't. No, no. Our, oh. our, ba- our badge has been like that a long before theirs was. Um, and yeah, who cares? I mean, like in the end of the day, as well. There's a lot of badges that look similar out there. Oh right? yeah, I mean, exactly it's like that. exactly yeah, that. Yeah, so we've always had a line, even when it was. You know, like this, it's still a line, exactly. you know, so that hasn't changed. It's just round now instead of, um, you know, the, the shield sort of style. Um, no, but I like it. I like the round. I think it takes us back to an era where we were successful, exactly. uh, where we won trophies. You know, the European Cup, you see pictures of Mortimer lifting the trophy. He's got the round badge, you know. Um, so I'm all for like sticking to sort of those traditions and, you know, going back, something sort of modern, but you know, sort of also a bit of a throwback. You know, I like it, so yeah, I'm all, like I'm down too. with that. Um, I agree with you though. There were round badges that I prefer a little bit more, but ones with the gold outlining and you know that sort I'm of. I'm happy thing. with it though. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm happy with. It. I think it was time for change. Definitely. Um, but I'm happy with it. I think they could have done a little bit better. Yeah, but look, we'll change the badge eventually again. This is not going to be the last badge that Villa will ever have. That's right. So let let us know if you liked the round badge and um you know which one would you have gone for the round or the the shield or you know the, any, the gas or, lamp. Yeah, yeah, the gas lamp. Would you which one did you like? And are you happy that we've gone back to the old school um style? Because I certainly am. Um, yeah. So there's not really too much more to go on about the game. Um, 
we can we we've already done our predictions for Brighton. I predicted a win. Um, you I predicted, too, didn't I? yeah, I think we both predicted wins. I'm, I'm going to change it. I think oh. I, Tommy said three nil. I think. Gonna, yeah, I oh. think I think we'll win. I think two, I think I said two one. I'm going to stand by that. I think it's what I said. Yeah, um, feels like a while ago since we recorded that man new podcast, but I know, I know, because um, Brighton are Brighton are bloody good. They, right. they they're not bad. They just knocked the league leaders out of the league cup. So, I know, I know. um, yeah, beating Arsenal three one. So yeah, they are no pushovers and deserve his sides. Wherever he's been in um, at Shakhtar or in Italy with Sassuolo, they always have a go at you. But we seem to be Brighton's bogey team. Yeah, I know. We I are. Know. I think we are Brighton's bogey team in some ways. So yeah. we always seem to beat them or get yeah. a decent result. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, hopefully Trossard is thinking, I don't want to get injured before the World Cup. Yeah. You know, because uh, I think he's got a very good chance of actually playing for Belgium, especially with the sort of injuries to uh, they've got to Lukaku and the guy guys like Dries Mertens and this sort of retiring. Um, yeah, I think he he could he could play for Belgium. So hopefully he's thinking, oh, I've got a little knock. Maybe don't play me this week. Um, but uh, yeah, um, speaking about the World Cup, we had uh, Cash Benderek. Dan Donka, uh, Amy Martinez, um, all the ones we really thought. Have we um, seen anyone? Have we seen anyone? It could be it, maybe. Yeah, about Olsen? I don't know. I haven't, have they announced their squad yet? I think they're still, I don't think yeah, I don't, they've announced their squad yet. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they haven't, but he'll be uh, there. I heard Young, Ashley Young, was in the the, the massive England squad that Gareth Southgate was choosing from. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think he was going to go, but fair play to him. That just proves how well he's been playing. Um, and he's a versatile player. You know, he yeah, can play right exactly. back, left back. But, yeah, uh, if you're taking Ashley Young to a World Cup, you've got some issues, I think. Like, No, I know. No, I didn't no, know go, no offense, but, but yeah. yeah. I, I'm saying, I'm, like, fair play to him for getting his body yeah. into a position at 37. He's in the, what is it, the 50-man preliminary squad, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, that's a, that's a good effort. I mean... And it just shows how how good he has been while exactly. Matty Cash has been injured. So exactly. well done to him. But um, I was quite happy with the England squad as uh, as an England fan. Um, I was You're happy Aussie, that... You're an Aussie, mate. You're an Aussie. Uh, look, <laughs> for 51% English. I was born there. All right. <laughs> that, that's what I say. Um, no, but uh, Madison being in there, I thought was good. The only one I felt a little bit sorry for was uh, Tomori. So yeah, I, I, I don't know if he'll say that. I would have liked Tomori there instead of say Maguire or Eric Dyer, but you know, the one that, the only one that surprises me, Scott, is Calvin Phillips. I know he's a good player. I understand he's a good player. Yeah. But what played one Premier League game this season? I think the thing with him is we don't have many good players in that position. I mean, yeah. if 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 uh, Declan Rice gets injured. Um, it's oh. Calvin Phillips or D- or Jordan Henderson, and that's about it. I know, I know, but I just think he was never going to pick anyone else. Probably. Uh, I mean, he's got his favorites. Look, Harry Maguire is the same. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, for example, you refer to Australia, right? You to the Aussies. Trent Sainsbury, who no one's probably ever heard of. Do right. Research if you haven't. But the manager of Australia, I think it's his son in law. Mm. He's come back from injury. And he he's dropped back. him. He dropped him. He didn't pick him. Because he's been injured. You yeah, know? so well, he's that's come back that was well, surprising. You gotta surprising. Do it. You gotta do it. And um, the whole issue with the uh, the guy, the young kid from Roma, yeah. who no, who no, turned no. down Australia, that was uh, no, that was disappointing. Who, who cares? Who cares? You can't. I know he's going to be good, right? He's going to be good, but he's not. He's not going to win us the World Cup now, is he? Like he's not. Like he he's not the final piece of the jigsaw puzzle to go. We're going to win the World Cup. We're not. No. I want us to honestly. Do you, do you think they'll get a point? Yeah, of course. I think, uh, I think we're top the group, mate. Top the group. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You no, you I heard think, it here first. Australia I, I think, to top the group. I think, I think with, we against will, France. It's the, it's the, it's the Aussie nature. We we don't go out. We always go out fighting. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. we don't leave anything out there. And even if we don't, yeah, I think points, Australia will beat Tunisia. So do I. So do I. Um, I think, I think but we'll Denmark. Denmark no, nah, Denmark and France are too good at the moment. Denmark. I think Denmark don't, will top that group. Don't 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 the Aussies, mate. Don't. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying they won't, but this I'm is saying, the, re- this isn't the great. This isn't the greatest Australian team ever. No, it's not. It's not. 
it's not. I'm not saying it is, but don't write us off. We got some. I'm talent. Not, no, I would never write them off. We got they, some talent, and they they've got that never say die attitude for hundred percent. And they knocked out Peru in the qualifiers, who are an excellent team. So who beat us in the last World Cup actually in the group? So hundred percent. So yeah. That's good. But so, yeah, catch up with us on the Coupe de Villa World Cup edition coming soon. Get excited. We got Brighton, the last um, the last podcast for the first half of the season coming up after Sunday. So um, make sure you catch that one. Let us know in the um, in the comments how you're feeling about Unai Emery, how you're feeling about the changes you're seeing. What do you like? What do you dislike? What, what do you want to see from him? And, um, yeah. We'll see you all after Brighton. Up the villa. UTV. See ya.